Today's video is brought to you by the Sika Bench Press program. This is a program eight weeks in length, specifically designed to push your bench press. It goes from two to three sessions a week. And if you're kind of an athlete who likes to straight arm their way out of side control or full mount, this is the program for you. Recently in Jiu Jitsu, there's been a lot of public facing drama around the use of PEDs, both in tested and untested divisions. We've seen multiple positive drug tests in the IBJJF. And in the private sector, the untested sector, what we've seen is a public spat between Nicky Rod and Gordon Ryan, who's be former teammates. Now, long story short, you might have seen that more plates, more dates got involved and released a video recently saying from a technically unannounced normal blood panel taken by Nicky Rod, essentially saying that it doesn't look like he's on performance enhancing drugs right now. It was not an anti-doping test. It didn't test for metabolites of any drugs. It just looked for routine hormonal markers related to testosterone and testosterone signaling molecules and a sundry of other health markers. This again wasn't in any way a metabolite testing procedure. And as Derek talks about in the video, he essentially just says that it doesn't look like he's on drugs now, according to Derek's interpretation, but it doesn't really clear him of being natural. A lot of people have taken this and ran with it and suggested that Nikki is natural. It's hard to know if this is a joke. It's hard to know if anyone's being super sarcastic here. I just want to reiterate before we get to the bit where we talk about our opinion on the drug test is that we're really not judging anyone or ragging on anyone and I know we say this all the time when we talk about pets but I just want to reiterate every time in case you're new to the channel or you haven't heard us say this before if Nikki is on gear we don't care if Nikki's not on gear we don't care you know and I just want to really reiterate that it's just an opinion on the facts being presented because it is important to other people if Nikki is or is not on gear or if this is a serious thing so I just really really want to reiterate that that it's not a judgment factor we're just saying what we think of the facts from our, I suppose, position in the industry and working with athletes. We just want to be clear that it's not judgment. It's just looking at the facts as they're presented. Mr. Crack, lads, did you see the results of Nicky Rod's blood test? Looked like he was as natty, was natty for his match against Gordon two months ago. Those blood tests are about as useless for detecting head use um, as you licking your finger and sticking it in his ear. Uh, I'll be completely honest. I, I think that's just uh, it's a waste of a 45 minute video if you're going to watch all of it. Those tests have nothing to do with anything you will ever be tested for in sport. If you're going to an amateur level weightlifting meet, the test that they did on his blood, like his blood analysis, is nothing to do with taking drugs and it tells you nothing. If you went in there, ramped off your head. On a load of gear, yes, you might see some artifacts of taking a lot of gear in the same way where if you looked at someone, you'd see some artifacts of them taking gear. Um, it is useless. I read into the results of those blood tests as much as I'd ask a five-year-old walking down the street if they thought Nicky Rod was on gear or not. WADA would never, ever use anything like that. USADA would never, ever use anything like that. Calling those things... Blood, uh, drug tests um, is like calling a cyclist an astronaut. They're both traveling to places, but their destinations are very, very different. It's not, they're not drug tests. They're basically doing a blood panel to see how healthy he is. And to be honest, a lot of those values are values of somebody who may have taken gear in the past. Yeah. So it's the, very unhealthy for a 24 year old. So the big thing I would take from that is that the pre-diabetic insulin or indicator, so like he's fasting blood glucose, if he was fasting and his hemoglobin A1C were pretty high. And if they don't really what you see in that it's pretty much at anyone who takes growth hormone is you see a fairly uh, consistent response in a negative effect on your insulin sensitivity when people take growth hormone, regardless if they're in great shape. Regardless, if you're taking other anabolics, it still affects people to different degrees. It might be quite small, or it could be if you're doing it for a long time, you will see an effect. But essentially, everyone will see an effect. And there's mitigating factors that you can do. And you know, people like Broderick and other people would be far better place to talk about that. But when you look at those, that's the biggest thing that jumped out at me. And I saw in the Zach yesterday, he said before the video came out that he's like, oh, he actually is really unhealthy, but it doesn't look like he's on gear. But look at those bloods, I'd actually put money that he was on gear going by that uh, the diabetic because generally what you'll see is he's 26 years old. 
He's like somewhere between 10 and 12% body fat and he trains multiple hours a day. There's just no way, no matter how poorly he eats, it's just so incredibly unlikely that he is in any way pre-diabetic unless it's from the use of exogenous hormones uh, in one form or a fashion. Uh, like it just, your muscles act as an insulin well, or a glucose well, uh, and the fact that he's in such good condition, there's just no way that he, he could be pre-diabetic. That would be so crazy. Like for example, who was the rower who won multiple British medals? Uh, not Chris Hyde. That was a cyclist. There was the James rower. James Cracknell. Someone, one of them has is like diabetic now. Oh, sorry, not James Cracknell. I know who you're talking about. So he, he and like he was a hundred and something kilos or whatever, and he talked about their diet being a lot of carbohydrates and stuff. But he's also winning Olympic medals in a power sport, so it's probably fair to say that it's likely he was using growth hormone. And if you abuse it for long enough, it's potentially something that could be happening. So I just want to touch on the aspect of the use of growth hormone and its impact on glucose metabolism and related markers. So we would have seen that hemoglobin A1C and fasting blood glucose. Nikki actually said in a video that he was fasted by about eight hours. Now the fasting blood glucose would be maybe potentially affected by that, but the hemoglobin A1C is something that's generally about a 30 day analysis or approximately of the fasting blood glucose in your blood. Now there is interesting places where you might have a, an appropriate hemoglobin A1C, but you might actually have really high fasting blood glucose. So there's kind of some potential issues there, but essentially what it is, it's the glucose coating around red blood cells. Now, on that subject, what we see in healthy users of growth hormone, we see that they generally end up with increasing markers of fasting blood glucose levels or insulin sensitivity indicators. So they essentially become closer to diabetic is basically what happens when we see long-term use of growth hormone now the interesting thing around that is a lot of times with anabolic steroid users is that we'll actually see the opposite so growth hormone isn't an anabolic steroid but when we see people use things like testosterone and testosterone derivatives we'll see that their fasting blood glucose hemoglobin a1c and other related markers are actually pretty favorable due to the fact that they have high muscle mass low fat tissue and they train a lot and this muscle tissue acts as a, a way for this glucose to be disposed of into the higher levels of lean body mass. However, when we see healthy users use growth hormone, we see anecdotally that their insulin sensitivity markers are pushed in an unfavorable fashion. Now, we've a lot of studies or some studies on the use of growth hormone. So in patients who need that growth hormone for reasons, so if you see it in uh, pre-diabetic patients or teenagers who need growth hormone for development, we'll see that essentially that their metabolic system or their metabolic actions around growth hormone generally tend towards disfavorable conditions. And we'll see this in terms of, uh, there's like a number of human studies suggested that growth hormone administration in GH deficient adults may reduce visceral adipose and improve cardiometabolic distribution. However, some studies have raised concerns over increased insulin resistance and impaired fasting glucose during GH treatment. Now, does it return to normal? Um, does it return to normal after they cease treatment? Is not always clear. And um, we see this as problem is with these studies, it's in patients groups or people who are at risk who have issues. So it's hard to say if it is causing other issues, but we do know, and it's pretty well known in the relevant spaces that GH is not good for your glucose metabolism. There's another thing I would say, and that is there's no reason to trust Eric. Like, I don't know, like, he's not a relevant body. Uh, and not to throw shade at Derek, I'd say that about anyone. If uh, Greg Duchette did it all the way to some, if Zach did it from the outside, if Zach was doing this whole thing independently, there's no reason to trust him. It's just another person yeah. with a company and a YouTube personality to make content. Uh, I watched the video and Derek didn't commit to anything uh, so again it's not throwing shade at Derek at all it's just that there's just no reason to trust him why would you there's literally no chain of command here there's nothing there's nothing here and it's 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 purely for cloud and ego not ego not even cloud it's just purely for YouTube drama and internet drama for the testing uh, so I suppose at the end of the day it doesn't even matter uh, certainly follow good interest I'm not trying to be like oh it's, I don't even care I'm very interested in this but I would just say comments on the situation looking at it would actually make me more likely to think he was on drugs because when 
did it initially i was like okay maybe it's possible he's not on drugs like maybe he's just a freak because he's clearly a very talented athlete yeah, yeah. Uh, but like given what's more likely someone could be easy at the highest level and the dirtiest sport probably currently going in an untested federation is on drugs or he's a freak of nature and he's not taking drugs you would say oh look if i'd put money down i would say he's probably on drugs um but because everybody else is yeah except for the rule of total brothers probably but um oh uh, yeah yeah it's i i kudos for him for taking it though I, do you know what i think it'd be really cool if he was natural and not because i think it's cool that he's that natty or he's natty and he's not uh you know he's somehow more virtuous i always think it'd be really interesting to see if he did then take drugs to see who he'd beat that's what i think about that my thoughts on this are he could well be he could well have had a conversation with his drug consultant yes three months ago where they said you've been off since august you can start talking as much shit as you basically want now you're not going to do a usada panel or a usada test or a series of tests by usada that's not going to happen you're going to get if if anything does come out you'll get the usual stuff of it will come out on blood panels and, and they probably like you can get blood test done right now. You get the results in four days time and they could have checked that previously. And it's like, OK, go on social media, collect as much clout as you possibly can, which is the main aim of their new gym that they've set up. It's very much leaning into the social media side of things. All of this is definitely not hurting their social media presence. And you could have all of that done. It's a lot of free publicity for free basically with no negatives coming out of it you bought so hard into this conspiracy theory yeah i just um... i hate the fact that people are going online looking at blood test results thinking that they know something about anti-doping or passing tests oh but do they have full elbow extension is the thing yeah. um yeah 